guys. Fire away. Matt, speaking of, it is game week. Just your thoughts that this week is finally here. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, we had a really good camp, a lot of improvement. And uh, it, it's just something special when you're actually competing for a, against an opponent. And the, the players feel that. You can feel the, the added energy and just the excitement to not always going against ourselves, but getting ready for an opponent. I know it's probably not easy to pick, but what position group were you most pleased with their progress? In camp? Well, you're right. That's not easy to pick. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Um, I, I really do think we showed improvement at, at every spot, I mean, including quarterback who, you know, he's a four-year starter. But I thought, you know, the running backs, we, we, we like our depth there. Our offensive line, even though we lost two pretty good players, we feel like we have better depth there. And uh, tight ends have always been kind of a leadership position for us. We've got experienced guys there, and they've lived up to that and improved their game. And then the receiver position is, is a lot better simply from the fact we had a lot of first-year players last year, and now the biggest improvement you make is from year one to year two. So I, I really do feel like we've improved as an offense and uh, hopefully we'll see that on Saturday. What were the what would you say the hallmarks of Adrian's August have been or were? I mean, what what did you notice most about this game? Uh, you know, he's always been a leader. I think he did a lot of good things in the summer to get his body even in better shape than he has been. Because uh, we we ask our quarterbacks to run sometimes, you know, and he's and he he doesn't get tired. You know, he kind of pushes the pace of, of practice, pushes the tempo. Uh, he, he's throwing more accurately than he's thrown in the past. Um, so he's really taken up every notch of his game, another notch. And then from a leadership standpoint, which is where we really need him, he's, he's done the same thing there too by being a little more vocal. Um, our guys look to him as a leader. And the biggest thing by being a leader is leading by example. You know, being, being the first one out there, taking charge, uh, going 100 miles an hour. And he's doing all that type of stuff. And so I, I'm excited to see where he can take us as, as our leader. Yeah, you, you, you got to have multiple guys just from the, the beating those guys take, and you never know what's going to happen in, in a game. But uh, we do feel like we're closing, we've closed in on one. We're not releasing any depth charge right now, but we, we want to have one guy kind of take the bulk of the load. And the other thing, it's sometimes the game determines that. If a guy gets in there, is running really well and breaking tackles and doing a good job, that guy's going to stay in there. And so, but at the same time, you got to be smart enough to have, if, if, if it's to the point where it's a 10 play drive, and he's not as efficient or he's a little bit tired, we need to get another guy in there, and we feel like we have capable backups to do that. What's it? You talk about Steph, Ruben, and, and Morrison. Are, are all three of those guys guys that you think you can handle sort of a future back type workload in a game over the course of the season? Yeah, yeah. So all three of those guys, if, you know, for whatever reason, circumstance was that specific guy was the guy, we feel good about it. What's a, what is a bulk of the load? Like, how many carries is that, do you think? Uh, tough to say, but you like to see a guy. When, when our offense has been uh, real efficient, we, we've had guys that have carried anywhere from 20 times to, to 26 times. Um, and some, some of that depends on how the game's going and the run-pass ratio, trying to stay balanced, uh, what the score is. So a lot, a lot of things go into that. Can you tell in August which guys can get those extra couple of yards? You know what I mean? With the practice structure and the limitations, they sometimes put on attack and stuff. Or do you need the games to sort of see who's that guy? Sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Talon. Like, we don't do a lot of live stuff. We want to keep our guys healthy, uh, but we, we we feel like we've done enough live stuff to see what some guys can do. And you know, uh, even though we don't tackle guys and bring guys to the ground and and try to stay up and play full speed, you, you get a pretty good indication of who's going to finish, who can make the cuts, uh, who who can do their assignments. But I do think you know some guys in games t take it up another notch. And, and we're not going to know that until, until Saturday who that is. Hey, Matt, how much um, Brett Bielma are you familiar with? Just how much have you watched over the years as a defensive coach? Yeah, I mean, just as a big picture coach, I mean, one of the more successful guys in the country. He's been successful as a head coach a lot of places, uh, been successful as, as, a, as a coordinator. Um, you know, we, we got our work cut out for us for, for a whole bunch of reasons. They're going to be good. I mean, they beat us last year. Uh, they've, they've got they've hired a really credible coaching staff with a lot of experience and you know we've, we've tried to do our best 
to look at everything we could possibly get from the defensive coordinator that came from the University of Missouri and the things they do, and then kind of also tracking back Coach Belima's history and the different places he's been, been in the NFL. And, and uh, so you can't, you can't prepare for everything. All, all you can kind of do is give your best guess, be as prepared as you possibly can so your kids know what they're doing. And I, I think we're in a good place. That, that might, it might seem sort of self-explanatory, is it? How much of that falls on Adrian to make it? Yeah, well, as every every position, especially the quarterback position, is going to have to react to maybe something that we didn't show them on, on game day. That's, that's part of football, especially in the first game. Uh, you know, as coaches, what we try to do is is make the plays or the game plan as simple as possible. So when there's a wrinkle here, or a blitz here, or something we didn't prepare for them, they can react and play, and then show them as many variables as possible. Um, and I'm, I'm a big believer in this. Sometimes. Uh, the less plays you have, the more answers you have. Because if they do this, we got to have an answer for it. And so we, we've really kind of kept that uh, as a mindset, as a coaching staff, is hey, we got to have plays, no matter what they come out in. We feel like we can execute, and we have answers to those those issues. Why your running backs and wide receivers have not played significant snaps at Nebraska? Do you say anything to them beforehand to calm their nerves, like hey, it's just like practice, or anything to calm them down for this first big game? Yeah, that's a good question. We're going to have some first. I still have some first-time guys in the, in the game, um, and, we, and we try to do as many game-type situations, so it's it's not a shot to them, but it is still diff, different on, on game day. And uh, what we found is the more focused you can actually be on your specific assignment in that play alleviates nerves. You know, if you start thinking about everything, the game, I haven't played yet, blah, 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 then that's when you lose focus and, and the nerves actually get to you. But if you can really focus in on your exact assignment, um, it actually helps you alleviate nerves and, and play better. So that, that's going to be our big message is, you know, control what you can control. You know your assignment. Focus on that and then play the next play. And then if you can really do that, um, it does a, does a good job of kind of mellowing you out, staying in the moment, and, and not worrying about all the other stuff that's going on. Sure. Well, we know they're going to be good, you know, and we should definitely know they're going to be good because they, they beat us pretty good last year. So uh, we know we got our work cut out for us. And, uh, yeah, it's always an advantage to have an experienced team um, that, that, that knows what's going on, even though they, they got a new system to deal with. But, you know, and I'll, I'll say on our side, too, we feel like we're a lot more experienced as well. And we, we feel like we're, we're better prepared than we were last year at this time. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens on Saturday. What are you guys seeing that? Uh, well, we're executing. Speaking offensively, we're executing better. Uh, we're able to do a little bit more because uh, because last year we were so we had so many first year players. So I think it's a, it's a combination of uh, guys feeling confident, and being able to execute better, um, understanding the package better, which lets you do a little bit more. And uh, yeah, hopefully that all show on Saturday. Uncle Martin's a kind of a choir guy. Um, have you seen his personality sort of grow over the last year? What do you think of him just as a person? Yeah, well, he's still definitely a, a quiet guy, and uh, I, I love the way he he comes comes to work every day and gives everything he's got. He, you can make an argument with a lot of these guys, but he's up there. He's never missed a rep at receiver the way we rep guys and go 100 miles an hour and split our team into three different groups. He never missed a rep, and he goes full speed every single play. So I've been very proud of the way uh, he's practiced. He's made a ton of plays. Um, he always thinks he can get better. He's very coachable. And uh, as a coach, really, that's, that's all you can ask for. There's a big difference from him this year as opposed to last year. He's way more confident. Because last year, he wasn't even eligible, I think, until game four. So he didn't have fall camp with us. So even though he is kind of an experienced guy, he's been in some other schools, he, he was a freshman. You know? And so he's, he's not playing like a freshman anymore. He's playing like an experienced guy that we can rely on to, to make plays. Were you, sure, were, were you not sure if he would contribute at all last year because of that situation? And how impressed were you? that he really did want to put all of his effort in playing even last year. Sure. Yeah, it, it, uh, I was because we were going through an appeal when he transferred to get him to be eligible. And you never know. I mean, that's in the NCAA's hands. So you never know what's going to happen. And so we, as coaches, we didn't know. And he, he did a good job because he wasn't able to practice with us. When he, when he came back, we, we tried to do some extra stuff to get him caught up. But you have to do some stuff on your own. And to his credit, he did. And uh, he's very smart. You know, he's a quick learner, which that obviously helps. 
but all, all that his work ethic um, the type of person he is comes from a great family all that helped him get on the field last year but he's going to be I really think uh, a lot more improved this year as opposed to last year just because of his confidence and understanding our system sure so some of the similar things that I talked about uh, with Oliver you know, he's got transferred in so even though he is an older guy he's still new to our program you wouldn't tell that I mean our guys look to him as a leader because he developed a lot of good habits at the University of Montana. He brought those with him, and we've tried to enhance him. But he, uh, he works his tail off. He's a fast learner. Uh, he's very talented. We can do a lot of different things with him. The thing that's impressed me the most with him is how, uh, how he's learned it. You know, and the same thing, like Oliver had to do too, he had to put a lot of time in on his own to, to try to get up to speed. And we actually were going to slow things down for him, but he, he was learning things so fast, we felt like, hey, we can, we can run a normal offense and do everything we did last year and then some because of his work ethic and how he's picked things up. When did you identify that? And when did that kind of happen? Yeah, you know, I, I had a good feeling when he came here because I was friends with the University of Montana coaches, and they actually gave him a great endorsement, which usually doesn't happen when a guy transfers, especially one of their best players. But they kind of knew, it's like, hey, this guy wants to pursue his dream at playing at a different level, and if he doesn't go to your place, he's going to go somewhere else. And so I think they kind of helped us. And uh, they said, hey, you're going to love him. He's a leader for us. Um, he learns really fast. He can do everything that, that, that you do, because they do some similar things that we, that we ask. Um, so I felt really good. But you still don't know until they get here. Uh, and then the other thing that really surprised me is just how our, our whole team just embraced him, which I guess it should accept. They embrace every new player in, on our program. Is they embraced him. They all kind of put him underneath their wing and, and treated him like he'd already been here and made him feel really comfortable. That's not easy to go to a place where you're already really successful, you're an All-American, and then you, you come here, you don't know anybody, you don't know anyone's name, and then you get thrown in the fire, and our players, you know, just, just loved on him, and uh, I think he felt that, gave him a little extra motivation, and, and he's in a good place right now because we, we expect him to do some really good things for us. When you often hear offensive coaches, you know, talk about quarterbacks today, the number one thing they're looking for is decision-making. What comes to mind first for you when it comes to decision making at that position? What things come to mind for you? Well, well, a couple things. I think decision making is very important. How, how fast you can make those decisions, um, and and being able to react. And part of that's us, as coaches giving him a game plan that he feels comfortable with, where he he knows the reads. He he can make the fast decision, um, and then and then just doing your job. You know, when you make those reads and just going through prepared. Because sometimes where we've gotten trouble in the past is. And not just the quarterback position, but maybe trying to do something a little bit too much, which gets you in trouble. You know, trust your progressions, uh, trust the guys around you, and and do your job. And and Adrian's been doing that. Adrian's been doing that. And if sometimes we, because I said that some of the turnovers last year we were trying to do too much, and and it hurt us. But if you just trust your protections, that guy's not open. Go to the next guy. You know, and, and have confidence in that. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be successful. And he's been doing that all camp. Well, improvement, uh, we feel like we have a lot of depth there. We lost two good players last year. and uh, But we also played a lot of young guys last year, too, which was good. And so those guys have all, you know, took it up a notch. We think we have great leadership with, you know, Cam Jurgens because as, as a unit, specifically the offensive line, you're always as good as your leaders. But when you have a, you know, a proven center that's practicing harder than anyone on our team or as hard, um, that rubs off on everybody else. So I, I think that's going to show. And uh, I think our young players, again, have just been getting a little bit better each day. Thank you, Thank you guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, appreciate it.